Torah is not just something that you can just open a book whenever you feel like it and you're going to become a Talmud Chacham. You're going to become knowledgeable. It's not something that you can read on the side, maybe read it like a novel, whenever you get a chance, and then you're going to know what's going on. Torah is something that you have to prepare yourself in order to accept it, in order to be able to accept it, in order to be able to understand it, Ten people could read the same exact page in the Torah and understand ten different things. And only one of them is right. Or all of them are wrong. Or all tell them, ten of them are right. Depends. Depends who they are. Depends how they prepare themselves for it. So the Chag Shavuot is preparation to receive the Torah. Meaning that we have seven weeks to prepare our Neshamot to receive the Torah. So why don't we celebrate the actual holiday on the 51st day, which is when we got the Torah? Why do we celebrate it on the 50th day? If you're going to say it's Shavuot, then technically it should be on the 49th day, but it's not. If you're going to say it's uh, maybe Hashem liked the 51st day, then tell me why. The reason is, Abutai, is because HaKadosh Baruch Hu is trying to teach us, our generation, 3,300 plus years later, that the biggest part of Torah is preparing yourself. The biggest part of learning Torah is making yourself into a vessel that can accept pure Torah. There are many people that learn Torah, but few are actually able to accept the purity of it. As I was saying to you before the shul, when I first started out learning, it was hard for me to accept supernatural stories. It's hard for me. It didn't make any sense to me. I was a very rational human being. I was used to numbers. I was used to yes and no. I was used to legal, illegal. I was used to facts. Supernatural is not facts. Supernatural is something that's uh, beyond anything factual. It's beyond something that you can explain, rationalize, break down. It's something above and beyond. It was very hard for me. So when people would tell me, oh yeah, this rabbi did this, he revived the dead, or this rabbi, you know, prayed for somebody and the other guy died, or this guy, this guy prayed for somebody and he became healthy, all this stuff was hard for me to accept. But as I learned and learned, and at some point decided that I'm gonna have to submit, I'm gonna have to put my hands up and say, Hashem, you're bigger. You're bigger than me, you understand more than me, I'm never gonna be anything more than what I am. I have to accept whatever you say as if it's fact, even if I can't see it. I decide to submit. Whatever it says, I believe. It says that the rabbi revived the dead, I believe it. It says that somebody saw the Yawan Abi 15 minutes ago, I believe it. Why? not a fool. I didn't become a fool overnight. Because the more you learn Torah and the more you submit to the Torah, the more you realize that every single page in the Torah is full of miracles. Every single page of the Torah is full of things that are supernatural, things that don't make any sense. And as we were saying, the reality is, is that us being here today doesn't actually make any sense because there are almost 8 billion people in the world vast majority of them hate us. To such an extent that David Melech wrote in Tehilim, thank you for not making us meat for their teeth to grind on. For anyone who doesn't think that we live in such a generation, you could just go on YouTube and see what they were doing in Poland just a few days ago, where they put together a sack, filled them up with a bunch of uh, straw, wrote some words about it to symbol symbolize a Jew, and then had the entire community hit it in public and then eventually burned it after throwing it off over a bridge. Because that's what they want to do to Jewish people. This is now. If it was legal to kill Jews anywhere in the world, people would do it. Why? Because that's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants you to know. You're never going to be liked by them even when they tell you I like you. You're not supposed to be liked by them. You're supposed to be different from them. Now, those that are righteous among the, the Gentiles, you're supposed to help them. Help them get closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But those that hate them, don't waste your time hating them. Why? They're just the messengers of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. To tell you and remind you you're different. Now, of course, some of this stuff is very hard for people to accept because they have 
non-Jewish family members or non-Jewish friends or non-Jewish uh, bosses or non-Jewish uh, something and they like him and they're nice people so like I said not all non-Jews are bad oh Hashem I know plenty of them that are fantastic human beings but the vast majority of non-Jews are not supposed to like you why there's an halacha in the Torah called Esav Sonel Yaakov Esav hates Yaakov why because that's how HaKadosh Baruch Hu programmed him. That's how HaKadosh Baruch Hu programmed him. Why? Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu needs to use anti-Semitism in order to keep you alive. Not dead, alive. Because if you look at the world today, there's so much assimilation in the Western world. And as I was saying last week, over 80% of people in, 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 uh, in America are intermarried. You're talking about a generation where we are one generation away if something miraculous doesn't happen we're one generation away of no more jews in america one generation we're not like oh 50 years from now no no one generation away why 80 percent that means eight out of every 10 couples already the the bond of judaism is broken if it's the man that's it it's the end of judaism for him if it's the woman then it's on one or more generation because our kid is obviously not going to be a tzaddik unless something supernatural happens meaning that we have to depend on the supernatural in order for us to exist.